Heavenly Daddy, we just want to say a big thank you for today. Thank you for our lives. Thank you for mm -hmm. health. Thank you for vitality. Thank you for Bible study. Yes, thank Lord. you that we can camp around your Holy Spirit, even mm. from different parts of the world. We just pray that you speak directly to our hearts. Yes, Let Lord. your word be like a sword that pierces even to the dividing asunder of our souls from our spirits, our joints from our marrow. Let it discern the thoughts and the intents of our hearts. Let it be a hammer that breaks every yoke, everything mm. that does not belong to you, oh mm. Lord. Let your word be like water that suits the soul, that cools our hearts, cools our bodies, cools our minds and our spirits. And let it be a fire that yes, sets Lord. us on fire for you mm -hmm. so that we can go into the new earth that you have prepared for us so that we can do what you've asked us to do. In yes. Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. amen and everybody said amen once amen. again let us know the city where you're joining us from if you're from outside liverpool or you're outside the united kingdom okay so last week right some questions were asked somebody did ask and said does everybody have an altar again love slido hashtag love slido that is where you can throw your questions and please if you are there just let us know you're there just type in i am here i am here all right let's go build an altar there tonight just joking right you know last week you took us i remembered to what happened a showdown i'll call it a showdown between um a prophet of god um and prophets of idols idols called baal and i think we see that story in the book of one kings one kings is in the old testament one kings and chapter 18 and there was a gathering between one prophet called elijah and uh I think how many prophets were there? I'm trying to remember. Four hundred and fifty. Right? There's a reason why um, uh, I want us to look at this because there was when you look at that in today's parlance, that's a minority versus a majority. So four hundred and fifty of them were going in a specific direction and their bail, all right, is their God, where they build altars and sacrifice to. But then Isaiah, sorry, did I say Isaiah? Elijah was a prophet of God, the God of heaven and earth, the creator of the heaven and earth, not a little G-O-D, who is not the creator of the heaven and earth, but a creation of mankind because at times people do ask what's the difference between god the big g-o-d and god small letter g-o-d and this is a simple question i mean answer i give the big g-o-d is the source of all life all living is the creator and the small g-o-d is created created by man because when you look at it these gods are either gods of iron gods of the sun gods of the moon you know the sun god the moon god even some people worship stars some people create gods out of animals you know so they are created by man but the god is cre is the creator of all so but then your focus which you started teaching us was raising altar that is building altar so if someone wants to know tonight what exactly is an altar before we look at the because you were sharing with us 12 things last week uh, that we 
um, just bringing out a little bit of explanation of those 12 stones that Elijah um, used to build, 12 stones that he used to build an altar to God. So, yeah, what is an altar? What is this altar all about? How would you explain to someone what an altar simply is? Uh, thank you very much for that question, uh, Pastor. Um, I'll define an altar as uh, just a, it's a place of meeting, a place where, as I said last week, a place where um, humanity meets divinity. So you, the worshiper, uh, you meet with what you worship. So that I could be that. anything at all, anything at all. So that's the simple definition for anyone. I love that. To be able to the place where the worshiper meets, <laughs> meets with what is what they are worshiping yes okay so on these altars what usually happens on the altar you know in that yeah a meeting place so like uh i remember last week you did use the word source that whatever people believe is their source yes becomes a god to them to them yes that's what they literally are worshiping yes. so for example if somebody believes their source is f their career yeah they are going to worship that career yes so what sort of themes in terms of that worship because you used two words worth and sheep last yes. week yeah so uh, how do we how do how do people worship um what sort of from, stuff do they do yeah so from the word worship and i said last week uh worth and ship so it's something you just give a whole lot of regard for so much that you're willing to let go of everything else to um to honor that thing so that means that you would always rearrange your time your day your priority around that thing so mm. anything is going to happen around that source you will rather shift everything else but that source so your day will be set from that source so that source will not be movable wherever it's placed in your calendar but everything else has to be moved uh, to give place or to give time or to give um, a, a place of um, high regard for that thing or that source so that's that that would be a simple way of, of putting mm. it so if god the creator is that source i give my worth <laughs> and relations and i relate with everything about my life revolves around god yes and takes meaning from him so yes. if it's something else like for example i gave the example of career it means yeah. the career now becomes everything that i take uh, my relevance and everything from yes so what are some other examples of gods that people can worship because then we will be able to answer this question somebody's asking from last week does everybody have an altar yeah so give us an give i don't know do you want to tell us some other <laughs> gods that people raise altars to and they don't realize um a, a good example would be ourselves mm. uh, so just yourself you 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 look up to yourself uh, you worship yourself you do mm. everything around yourself i, I think that that would be the easiest one especially i um, mean our day and time of social media um, mm. where we we create a version of ourselves that we give a lot of regard to nothing can touch that version of ourselves nothing must say anything negative about that version of ourselves even mm. how that version of ourselves is portrayed must be perfect so that that would be like the simplest um easiest one that anyone in the digital world today can actually relate to so there are other ones as well um in the in in our in our times sports is one um the news is another one uh money is a really really big one because mm. uh, even the bible talks about the the fight 
between the worship of God and the worship of money. So money is another one. Um, so our, as I've said, our person's personality and everything that has to do with our person would be an example of um, other idols or other gods that we worship. Mm. All right. So I haven't established that because every other thing you've mentioned apart from the creator was created. So if self becomes the God we worship, where we worship our self, and when we really look at it, Jesus said, that self, we've got to die to. You know, so we were created. If money becomes what we worship, becomes our source, money was created. Hmm. If um, football, sports, you know, you, I know you cleverly said sports, <laughs> but there's, there's one idol that um, was worshipped for the past, <laughs> past uh, five or so weeks <laughs> across Europe, <laughs> you know, that never came home. You know, <laughs> let me be let me be spiritually and politically correct now. You know, for example, you know that every other thing <laughs> gave way to that idol of football. You know, football was created. Uh, I'm trying to remember the what else you mentioned. Um, you know, politics as well. Politics. Yeah. news you said news and yeah, things like that you know, so oh. these are all creations of man okay so that brings us to that question does everybody have an altar what would you say about that uh yes uh emphatically yes okay yeah will you expand shit because uh, yes, you said because... Altar, altar now let's go by your simple definition so that uh, the child watching can understand and flow so altar is the place where what the worshiper meets what he's worshiping yes i just love that simple definition okay so does everybody then have an altar yes you said yes okay so can you expand on that uh, so as i said it's everyone has something that is important to them and if you look at our lives, no matter where you are, whether you're a young person, you're a child, you're an adult, you're an elderly person, um, there's something that is important to you. Mm -hmm. And if you look at what that thing is, you find out that you've got a lot of things that you look at, there's some things you engage with, but there are some things that are more important than other things. And then you start to find out where your altar is when you look at the things that you cannot shift for any other thing so there are some things you check if you check yourself and you find out that there's one thing or there are two things that no matter what happens nothing can shake that thing then you have an idea of where your altar is mm. so as i said for the people like as you use the example of the career for example if you find out that you will never ever shift anything that has to do with your career, even at the cost of your health, at the cost of your life, at the cost of your family, you find out that that has become your idol and your place of work now becomes the altar because mm. you don't do anything to shift. Even if the doctor tells you, you will die next week. You would rather die <laughs> at that altar mm. than to die at home. So that's that's mm. just a simple way to actually find out what that altar is and what that idol is. And that altar, that idol can also can be at the expense of God. You will even God, you are ready to shift. I mean, put God in the back seat. Yeah, because that because God is not your God. So mm. automatically god will not be in that important place so god is defined as as we said what what our source is so even though there's a source that is the source but we have chosen that this other thing is our source then that thing now becomes god and then mm. the real god shifts away from being the real god to mm. us as a person 
Mm. Yeah, I can read some comments here. So, so people say musicians, you know, some people have, can make musicians idols. Mm. Um, someone said K-pop idol. I think some people here are very modern. Okay, somebody's asking, can my parents be an idol? And this is a child. Yeah. I think I think yes, our parents can be our idols, and we've seen even people say it, even in everyday conversation that, you know what, my dad is my idol, or my mom is my idol. So yes, it is actually possible for our parents to be our idols. And I think also, you know, when our parents now take the place of God in our lives. You know so that the child will where you you don't really believe in god but you believe in your parents mm. you don't pray to god you pray to your parents your parents are your all in all and you know this is a very good question that a child is asking because you see that later in life some people the loss of a parent means the loss of everything to them they can't cope yep. with life anymore and that's why you know as parents it's always good to let our children know that there is a source. There is God. Introduce them to God early so that they know who their real source is. So that when daddy and mommy are no longer there, they know that there is a God who Jesus introduces as our Father who is in heaven. He becomes... He is our father. He is our source. He is the father of even our own hmm. parents. You know, I think there's a scripture in the Bible that talks about, you know, my father's God, the God of our fathers. So he should be the source of all. So your parents, you can love your parents, you can honor your parents, but don't make your parents God. Okay, if you say your your dad is your idol, your mom is your idol, um, you know, people say it in a differential way, but don't say it in a way that they replace God in your life. Okay, um, so that's that. Okay, let us go to 1 Kings 18 and uh, quickly remind ourselves as we look forward to more questions and participation let's see uh, their participation please those on facebook on the live stream we would like to hear your comments things you think can become idols gods you know sacrifice altar like we've had a very simple yet profound definition tonight the place where the worshiper meets what he's worshiping that's where an altar literally is and uh daddy ay told us now like we learned just now that your office can become a place where you know can become like an altar you will shift everything in life for for your career for work and all that because i've seen people sir who will make decisions they don't care it's all about their career they won't listen to sound counsel. They won't think about their family. They won't think about their young children. It's all about career. They will sacrifice their children on the altar of a career. I have seen it. I tell you, we have seen these things in people uh, that uh, we've had spiritual oversight over the years. All right. So from 1 Corinthians chapter 18, um if you want to take us from that verse 31 1 corinthians sorry <laughs> 1 kings i don't know why corinthians is coming to me tonight <laughs> maybe maybe we should go and visit corinth our next holidays <laughs> after new york or maybe someone online is watching from corinth i think corinth is in greece is it yes sir okay maybe we should go to to greece yeah okay yeah all right yes. yes someone said this and i must say it because i'm a pastor they say for some people their pastor can be their idol very very true that's true 
Very, very true. Thank you for that one, Adiola Patrick. Thank you very much. Uh, walking for God can become an idol in place of walking with God. Yes, Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Jojo. Jo. Jo These jo. are very profound, profound. You know, just today, you know, going back at what uh, Adiola Patrick just texted, I was having a discussion with my wife that I've seen where some men of God, pastors, to people they can never be wrong. Their pastor can never, never be wrong. Whatever they say, and is glaringly even to, to a child that, come on, this so-called man of God has missed it here. But no, he can be wrong. At that point, the pastor has become an idol. He's become what we worship in place of God. You know, men of God, where we worship men of God, not the God of men. Um, so there is a difference. Yes, sir. Yes, um, I also wanted to say that uh, it could also affect parents as well, where parents think they can never be wrong as well. So that is also a place where parents can become God to their children. So just mm. um, another way where it's possible that um the parents can never be wrong even when mm. the children or people around can see that so that that's another way uh, that someone just um told me about that a parent can become god to their children so that's mm. just to someone put a comment before kingsley kings or kingsley say pastor i don't mind going with you i don't know what he means by that <laughs> Please go with Jesus. <laughs> we'll be going to heaven. <laughs> okay, you follow me, like Paul said, as I follow Christ. If I stop following Christ, please don't go with me. Okay, I tell people, you know, the madness, and uh, you know, we're, we're in the social media uh, generation age where, yeah you go online you go on any of these uh, social media platforms the first thing everybody's looking for is followers you know you post something you want people to follow it you want people to like it you want people to share it you you know get on there you want as many people and now the world judges people on social media they call them influencers by how many people follow them hmm. but then one of the questions I ask myself objectively and sincerely before I follow you, excuse me, I want to know where you're going. Mm. I mean, that's sensible. I want to know where you are going. I don't care if you have one billion people following you. You can take one billion people with you too <laughs> and jump inside the river mercy here <laughs> or take them to hell. No, where are you going before I follow you? Mm. A balance from a mom. Children can become idols to their parents. To their parents. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Please, let's keep it flowing. Thank you. Wow, I think I know who that is. She's gold. Thank you for that uh, contribution from wherever you're contributing from. <laughs> and let me say this too your spouse can also become an idol yeah. <laughs> you know my wife is saying mm -hmm, here too yeah you can make your spouse also an idol and let me borrow what my wife always says it's always good you've got to know God for yourself know God know the God you worship the God you're serving the God you are following make sure it's not man it is the creator of man it's not the man of god is the god of the man you follow a man or woman as they follow god that's paul's balanced teaching in the bible so in other words you see me going astray don't follow me you see me following jesus follow me as i follow christ thank you all these contributions are Awesome, 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 awesome. Okay, all right. So, 
Elijah took 12 stones. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 31. Okay, let's start from the verse 30. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 30. Then Elijah said to all the people, come near to me. So all the people came near to him and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. You shared that with us last week. And then, verse 31, Elijah takes 12 stones. 12. According to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, Israel shall be your name. So, last week, you were sharing with us 12, you know, what this 12 stones could be like scripturally. Not saying exactly that that was the 12 stones he picked there because it was according to the number of tribes of sons of Jacob, but bringing up something very prophetic and profound. So, the first thing you told us last week, you shared with us was stone number one st worship that's the you know 12 stones to build the altar because that's what he used to, to, to you know to raise up that to build that altar because verse 32 if we look at verse 32 the bible says then with the stones the 12 stones right he built an altar in the name of the lord and he made a trench around the altar large enough to hold two seers of seed so stone number one, which you're going to expand to us tonight because we stopped last week at number eight. So as a refresher, you told us stone of worship, worship. And we've seen tonight uh, as a reminder to us what we will leave everything, everything to go after, to sacrifice for that's worth ship. Thank you, Mama, Mama, Mama Daisy, Mama Daisy. <laughs> Problems and life challenges can become idols. Yes, that we worship and sacrifice to. Thank you for that profound contribution. So worship, stone number one. Stone number two, word of God. Any altar we build must be according to the word of God. Dictated, the dictates, the guideline must be the word of God. Three, excellence. You know, God is excellent. You shared that with us. How excellent is your name, O God, in all the earth? Two, four, diligence. Stone of diligence. You know, the Bible says, you see a man who is diligent in his business, he will stand before kings, not before mean men. And the Bible also tells us that without faith, it's impossible to please God. Those who come to God in Hebrews chapter 11 must believe that God is and is a rewarder of those who diligently so we must diligently worship on that altar. Number five, the name of Jesus. That's right. We must. That's what we must call upon. That's what we must call upon on the altar, raised unto God. Number six, the blood of Jesus, the blood of sprinkling, the blood of sacrifice, the blood that cleanses us from all righteousness we can approach god the bible says by the blood of jesus and then number seven faith of god faith in god you know hebrews 11 6 same thing without faith it is impossible to please god and then last week we stopped at the anointing of god what will you say about that please keep the questions coming keeps the contribution coming we're talking today about building a new altar we've just looked at we're looking at 12 stones symbolic what these 12 stones could be or more all right so hashtag again love slido and the topic building a new altar and keep your facebook comments and questions coming up so we stopped at stone number eight building uh, that we can use to build an altar to God, the anointing of God. So do you want to explain that? Or do we quickly take this question? Thank you for that contribution online. Please, sir, can I explain to my teenagers how to strike a balance between loving someone or something beautiful and idolizing them? Loving someone or something and idolizing them. Right. 
let me quickly jump in there loving someone and idolizing now we have to also understand that word love and that word lost there are two things because uh, some of our young people not even young people some of adults too can differentiate between love and lost l-u-s-e the simplest way i've found out that you were about love is you know when you love someone the center of that love you have for that person is god because god is love so the way you will relate with that person is the way god wants you to relate with them love is patient love is kind love is long-suffering love is gentle love is uh um you know we see all those attributes listed in 1 corinthians chapter 13. so the center of your love of of your relationship to someone you love is god but lost the center of lost is you self what can i get from this person you are using somebody to satisfy your own desires mm. that is lost so let's separate that first because if we understand the difference between love and lost let me repeat love is when the way you relate with someone is dictated by the way god says you should love somebody the way god says you should relate with them that's love that's what shows you love somebody but when you lost after somebody because people at times don't know the difference you just think oh yeah i'm crazy when i see this person oh i can go to any extent i can buy them a shoe I can take them to hawaii but check your motive it's your own desire you are the center of what you are doing to them you are doing it for what you can get from them that's lost you are the you are the god uh, of that uh, relationship not god and the moment they don't satisfy your desires those you're lost again bang that's it it goes so that's one thing so idolizing just like you have said how do i idolize someone maybe you want to talk about how we idolize someone how we can idolize someone yeah thank you sir for that question i think uh, what was coming to my mind as we were talking is um sometimes you could also love that person not because of yourself and that's where idolatry now comes in so you love that person yeah, like as they say with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind so but now all your affection goes towards that person mm. and now the object is not yourself but the object is that person mm. so in that regard that person has now become god to you that's right so you've now idolized that person so it may not be selfish it may be you want to put all your love on that person which is what we another way because even god that we worship one of the ways we worship god is to love him with all our being so if you start loving people with all your being because there's something you said a few minutes ago so that you love people the way god wants you to love them so god defines the parameter of love and the one he defined solely for himself is the one that he says with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind with all your strength that is the one to god you know and then you love your neighbor as yourself or you love him as christ has loved you so if you, he has set um like standards for love they're both high don't get me wrong but when all that love that the way god wants you to love him you, you now love that person that way then i think you have shifted from loving that person to now idolizing that person so i think that would be a good way to put it okay practically speaking what are some signs that wait a minute 
This is not loving this person anymore. This is idolizing this person. Let me give an example. If uh, <laughs> this may sound very funny, you want to go, let's say, oh, you want to go to a church service to worship. And the person says, look, if you love me, don't go to church today. That's one practical way. Another way, if you love me, then what your mom is saying, don't listen to your mom, listen to me. Mm. Listen to me. I love you more than your mom. So listen to me. Don't listen to your parents, listen to me. Idolizing. I can hear mommy Sissy in the studio there, your home studio, what she's saying, can you echo what she's saying? Well, she said, uh, if it's your wife saying that, <laughs> he's, he's, not, he's not wrong. <laughs> if your wife is saying you shouldn't listen, <laughs> I think she should come on camera. <laughs> I'm sure she's joking. <laughs> you know, where the person now takes the place of God, they are the center of everything you do. That's idolizing. You don't listen to nobody anymore. Where you now becomes abuse of your own self. They are abusing you. They are abnormally using you. Yeah. Um, Wura says that example of idolizing someone when the person can do no wrong. Yes. That's it. To you, that person, you know, I was listening one day to a, a lady giving a testimony on a Christian channel said, look, no, no, it wasn't on a Christian channel. Let me, let me, let me re retract that. I went and I happened to be in one church like that many years ago. He said, look, I have come to understand this man of God he was talking about the pastor. Anything he says is what God is saying. He can, anything that comes out of his mouth. And in all sincerity, I just had the man prophesy something that was not scriptural. I was sitting down there and said, no, what this man just said is not in the Bible. And here's someone coming out to testify that this man is a man of God. Anything, she will emphasize it, that I so much believe my pastor. So that also, when the person can do no wrong to you, you just literally, I adore them. When you wake up in the morning, yes, let me talk from experience. They are the first thing that comes to your mind. Mm. during the day they occupy all your thinking you're thinking about them you want to sleep at night you're thinking about them you're dreaming you're dreaming about them they've literally entered your consciousness that's idolizing mm. god should take that place on the altar of our hearts not people because the people you idolize can change they can die they can leave you they can walk away and that's when people get broken hearted Wow, the contributions tonight are fantastic. Thank you for the participation. The anointing, that's the eight stone. I want you to talk about the eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, quickly, sir. Just mention them like that, and then we'll look at what some people are also saying. Because there's a big question here, how do I get rid of idols? Yes, sir. So anointing, the stone yeah. number eight, anointing of God, yeah, anointing of God is number eight. I'll just run through them because of our time. Yeah. And the unconventional. And so it's number nine. Uh, creativity is number 10. When you say unconventional, what do you mean, sir? So um, doing things um, that is not the norm. So you're doing something new, something unusual but still brings out a godly result. So Beautiful. it's not it's not something that anyone has done before. But we know because our God is new, our God is our source, is new. He brings mercies every day that are new. So God brings new ways of doing things that still brings honor and still brings glory to his name. Okay. So that's the unconventional, yes. Okay, creativity, number 10. Yeah, creativity or being, being creative. Our God is creative, we know. 
Um, God created all life, all intelligence. Uh, so that's just having that God's DNA on the inside of us. So building our altars with that and DNA. And he's the creator. The creator. The creator. So, okay, yes, sir. Number 11. Number 11 is the teachings of Jesus. Uh, mm -hmm. the words, teachings of Jesus. And number 12 is our offerings. Our, our offerings. Yes, All sir. right. Thank you for that. I'm trying to see, did I see something about offering uh, that somebody asked before? Thank you, Khan Lala. Um, number seven, I think maybe they're asking what number seven is. Number seven is the faith of God. Yeah, the faith of God. Faith yes. in God. That's what we mentioned. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. So these are the 12 stones that, you know, the whole idea is just that whatever we sacrifice or worship, whatever altar, these are the things that should guide what we do in that place of altar where the worshiper meets God in this context that we are worshiping. We must worship him in spirit and truth. We must worship him according to his word excellently, diligently, using the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the faith of God, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You know, the, Jesus said, my yoke is easy. Uh, my burden is light. And the Bible says, by reason of the anointing, yokes are destroyed. Burdens are lifted. So, and we must be ready open-heartedly to do uncon unconventional things unconventional things you know as long as it brings glory to god because when we look at the word new altar that we're talking about there are just so many things now and we become creative the word new is the word one of the meanings of the word new is creative it's also different so different unconventional okay the teachings of jesus must be according to and and our offerings, of course, must be what God instructs that we should offer. Yes. All right. Seed time, harvest time shall not cease. Uh, the Bible tells us in Genesis 8, 20 to 22. Okay. Let's look at quickly comments as we begin to round up um, quickly. Um, other idols, TV games, friends, pastors, denominations, spouses, fame, celebrities can be idols. Going abroad can be an idol. Blue passport, red passport can be an idol. Doing God's work can be an idol as opposed to being with God. Learning from Mary and Martha. And then big question tonight, how do I get rid of idols i think if i will give a shot at that number one you've got to first of all recognize what has become an idol or idols in your life because you know there are things sir you may not know have become idols you know one of my favorite stories, which I learned a bit about idolatry, was, um, you know, so I can say it, I've said it before, my wife knows this story. Someone that I thought I heard God say to me was going to be my wife. I mean, that year why I heard a voice. It was a gentle voice. And the voice said, that is your wife. <laughs> I saw this lady, never seen her before in my life. Met her at a bus stop, and that's what I heard. And I was wondering, did I hear this? Who's, this is God. So out of curiosity, of course, I wanted to know. Let me just cut a long story. Uh, we entered the same taxi. We got talking. Normally, I don't talk to strangers like that but i was moving by what i heard 
You know, the Bible says faith comes by hearing, <laughs> hearing by the word of God. But then the question later in, was it God that spoke? Or was it my heart? Or was it, I don't know. But this is the lesson I learned from it. Now, fast forward for four years. This person was... Um. Who got rid of Pastor? <laughs> uh, Pastor has been logged out temporarily. Yeah. <laughs> I was asking who got rid of Pastor. As if it's <laughs> Maybe because I was about to tell an idolatrous story. <laughs> the internet can become an idol too. I don't know what happened. My internet just <laughs> kicked me out. <laughs> All right. So quickly, anyway, got to know this person four years. The, it wasn't like the, pers the person didn't agree to marry me. Mm. You get me? But I just believed and I held on to what I believed I heard for four years relating with the person. Maybe the person might even <laughs> stumble on this broadcast. You know, very interesting because I can laugh over this. And to God be the glory, happily married. Today, 23 years, I'm still counting 23 years and um, many months and many years to go, happily married to my wife of my youth, the one God gave me. She's not an idol to me. I'm not an idol to her. She's my helpmate and my helpmate. We know the place of God in our marriage. Mm. Neither of us takes the place of God in each other's lives. So anyway, this person, four good years, daddy and wife. I will wake up in the morning, I'm thinking about her. I'm doing my devotion, I'm thinking about her. I'm studying the Bible, I'm getting revelations. The first person I want to share the revelation to is with her. So I quickly scribble revelations, notes, bundles of, you know, uh, 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 notes I will write, send it to her. Because, wow, revelation God has given to me. You know, four years. And then after the fourth year, I got tired of waiting for four years. So I said, you know, I have to, please, I need to know, will you, will you marry me? You know, you've not said it four years now, uh, you know. And then 1st of January, 1996, my New Year's present came in form of a big no. After four years. Well, the, the painful part of it was that, oh, wait a minute, you're asking me this question. I thought I told you four years ago, no show. You know? But then, it was painful. Oh, it hurt my flesh. And then I was praying. I said, Lord. And I, this time, clearly, God told me she has become an idol to you. And you can never marry an idol never you wake up in the morning and i was wondering how I said check your life she's the first thing on your mind when you are even studying the bible you're studying the bible to share revelation with her i mean i thank god for the long suffering i developed over those four years because i developed you for the right person <laughs> at the end of the day waiting patiently waiting for someone who literally told me come on i've forgotten you four years back you're the one wasting your time all these four years wow. but god was telling me no see she has become an idol i nope so i had to go into what i call a self-quarantine you know quarantine didn't just start with covid sir with me <laughs> i went on a six month quarantine fasting yeah i think somebody did ask a question about fasting yeah. can we bring that question back so i went six months literally um waited on the lord fasting and good enough that was the first time in that year for those who have been long enough in the, in the redeemed christian church of god that a hundred days fast was declared that under this fast was for me because that helped me 
I went on the 100 days fast to quarantine myself that God, I need to sort my life out. My heart is not right. Get rid of everything that is not of you in my life. And I literally had to get this person out of my heart, literally. You know, not in a, uh, um, what's the word? Terrible sense, because at the end of the day, uh, we're talking about a human being. I'm the one who put <laughs> the person on my on the altar and I was worshiping for four years. So I had to lead, I had to pray. I had to say, God, you know, I'm sorry. Um, I didn't realize. So first of all, you have to realize that there's an idol. So that's the, the question before we take this last one tonight about um, how can we get rid of idols? You've got to recognize the idols. And sincerely, I would say pray. But adventure, I don't know there's an idol in my heart. I've begun to worship something. I don't realize that a gift God has given me has become an idol. A problem that's bothering me has become some Anything that just occupies your mind takes over your life. It's like your, your world is revolving around. If you're in a subtle way, like mine, because if you look at me, I was studying the scriptures, brother. I was, in fact, that's when I was even getting revelations about marriage. Mm. The revelations, some of the things I even teach today and practice in my home. It was those years God was showing me things about marriage, relationships. And through that experience, it worked, it turned around for my good. Mm. That's why when I share with people and counsel people about relationships today, I'm coming from the depth of my pain how I learned to walk with the comforter, receive the comforting of the Holy Spirit, and I can use it to guide other people. So I can, in a way, tell when somebody's idolizing somebody from my own little experience and walk with God. So what is that thing that is just taking over your life, whether subtly or consciously, you wake up, it's the first thing in your mind. You're walking on the road, you're thinking about it. People, career, whatever, you, you wake up, oh my, that's my job. You know, I remember a friend of mine, a colleague, not a friend, a colleague, oh, said it took him long before he found a job. He's found his job, he doesn't joke with the job. He walks his head off. He comes to the office, he walks, oh, any little thing, oh no, I mustn't lose this job. Sir, he ended up losing the job, he was sacked. He was sacked for something flimsy. He was transferred to another branch. He got to that branch. And what happened? They needed to sacrifice somebody because they, they needed to shed weight. They said, well, we can't shed the weight of the old staff. Let's get rid of this new staff they just brought to us. That's how he was sacked. And I remember it was so painful and God spoke to me. It's because he's made this job his idol. I remember it was one strong lesson God was showing me too about somebody else. So that's one. Recognize the idols and ask God to help you. I had to go into a serious soul searching. And I began to see that nothing, one of the commandments of God, thou shall have no other gods besides me. God must be the center of everything we do. Relationships, God must be the center. Career, God must be the center. Ministry, God must be the center. Anything at all. So don't put anything else to be the center of and your life revolves around. Children must not be, you know. So that's uh, my own practical experience. So through prayers and everything, after, you know, I gave myself six months, I remember. And uh, God helped me, and afterwards, uh, my heart was now pure, and I realized that, no, this person can't be an idol, and must never be, and nobody must be an idol, or nothing must come that I begin to worship unconsciously. It's not when you bow, 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 no, 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 it's what you're thinking, what occupies the center of your thoughts. Okay, final question. 
about the fasting. Can you bring that up quickly? Okay, so good contribution play. No one should play with my food. Food can be an idol. Like movies can be an idol. Um, a desired location, green pasture can become an idol. Um, can I build supposedly right altar, prayer service to God, but with the wrong sacrifice? You see, the, the real thing is the heart. Just check, always check your heart. What's the motive behind what you're doing? Is, it, is God the motive? Like a friend of mine once said, these things we do, we call ministry, we do service to God. What is the motive? Who takes the glory? Are you doing this so that, yes, they can say, oh, wow, he did this for God. You know, like uh, Ananias and Sapphira. They saw Barnabas sell land, brought the proceeds, and they too did it. Their motive was wrong. So who takes the glory? So it's fasting a sacrifice for the altar. I'll leave you to address that, sir, and then we can go. Um, yes, uh, fasting can be a sacrifice for the altar because when you are doing the fast, uh, what's the motive? As Pastor said, what's the motive, motive. behind motive. the fast? So if you're fasting because you want that time, you want to set apart for God, then that becomes a sacrifice because you're coming to God um, in fasting. So it's God you're coming to in fasting. So that becomes something you bring as an offering on the altar to him. Yeah. So very, yep. very, very good. The motive for your fasting. The key is the motive for every sacrifice. Because, you know, fasting is denying yourself of something. So it's a sacrifice. Sacrifice of praise, sacrifice of prayer, sacrifice of thanksgiving, sacrifice worship. These are the sacrifices we bring. What is the motive? Sir, there's one sub to one. Oh, I've got to share this my testimony. People must hear my testimony. <laughs> yes, uh, I saw has been sacrificed again. <laughs> uh, so we'll wait back for him. Cheers. <laughs> Yes, Pastor, you are just, uh, you are just right. sacrificed. Yeah, that's it. I've been sacrificed. So, yeah. what's the motive? What I just wanted to say, finally, what's the motive behind people must hear my testimony? Is it so that they can see I have big faith? Or is it that they can see that God honors his word? And at the end of the day, the testimony of Jesus, the Bible says, is the spirit of prophecy who takes the glory so let's check our motives thank you very much sir final word from you as we hand over to the media team yes uh, final words uh, as we're looking at uh, just looking at um, ezekiel 36 25 downwards and verse 25 talks about he said then i will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean i will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols mm. so there's a possibility sometimes there are some idols you don't even know exist but just come to god and let him cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols so that's my final word Thank you very much. Uh, someone said, and I idolizing an idea of marriage. You know, when you are, you don't know when the, even the idea becomes an idol because that's all you're thinking about. So let God be the center of our thoughts. Let God, by His Spirit, guide our hearts. The Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God. They are the sons of God. And if we are led by the Spirit of God, we will not fulfill the desires of our flesh. Let's just constantly check our motives. Thank you. Daddy Y. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you for the contributions and the questions. Thank you, everybody. God bless you as yes, we hand over.
to the media. Amen.